Welcome students to lesson 22 of the Urban World Topic. In this lesson and the next one, we are going to be exploring a case study within a case study. An example of something called urban regeneration within Bristol. And I'm going to show you what urban regeneration is, why it's important, and how it improves the lives of people living within cities with a focus on Bristol. In this particular lesson, I'm going to introduce the case study and show you what it involved. And then next lesson, we'll find out how successful it has been and will be in improving people's lives. Please write the date, title and learning objective and have a pen and paper ready to learn. Time to review prior learning. Write 1 to 10, answer the questions from memory and then mark your answers. Game time. Question 1. In... Stoke Bishop, more than 90% of students receive A star to C grades at GCSE, now 9 to 5 grades. 2. In Philwood, life expectancy is 5 years lower than affluent neighbourhoods, at 78 years. 3. 25% of Bristol's waste is recycled, another 50% is converted to energy. 4. About 50% of Philwood's families are considered low income. So a family is defined as mother and father and two children. Five, the main cause of urban inequality in the UK cities was the decline of manufacturing and ports called deindustrialization. Six, about 3,200 homes are planned to be constructed in Harry Stoke, North Bristol. Seven, the regeneration of brownfield sites like Stokes Croft will lead to reduced air pollution from cars as people live nearer to their jobs. Eight, Buttress roots help to support tall trees in rainforests. 9. The emergent layer is the highest in the rainforest. 10. Rainforests are said to be stratified, which means they have layers. Give yourselves a mark out of 10. If you got 8 or more, fantastic. Please test yourselves on questions that you got wrong in a week's time and repeatedly until you know them from memory. Urban regeneration is an idea that we've already explored in this topic when we looked at Stokes Croft. But in this lesson, in the next lesson, we're going to go into more detail into one example. To introduce the idea again, I'm going to show you two photos and some questions. Use the photos and your own understanding to answer the questions and then we will discuss them. So number one. What has this city changed in these photos? Well, you should have said that in the top photo, there's a long highway filled with cars. And in the bottom photo, there's a river, there are trees, and there are people walking. Two, what problems might be reduced by doing this, by making this change? Well, you could have said air pollution might be reduced, since there are fewer vehicles releasing gases. You may have said that congestion might be re reduced. People can get around more easily. You may have said there are fewer cars, so it's easy to park. You may have said that people's quality of life has improved and their health has improved because they walk more. Perhaps they even talk to each other more. Three, what economic benefits might occur as a result of this? You may have said that since there's less congestion, people have higher productivity because they're wasting less time in cars and they're spending more time at work producing income for themselves and their businesses. You may have also said that since people are healthier, they are more productive as a result. Not only are they physically healthier, but their mental health has improved because they're walking amongst nature. Happier people are, again, more productive. Four, what types of area within HIC cities might be the focus of this kind of project? Well, you've learned about something called a brownfield site, a derelict urban former industrial area. That's a common project area. You may have also said that places that are unattractive or heavily polluted. You may have also said areas with significant problems, such as air pollution or congestion, might be the focus. In this lesson, I'm going to introduce you to an area within Bristol that has been the focus of such a change. The key phrase today is urban regeneration. Please write it and its definition. So what is urban regeneration? I've shown you the definition, but I'm going to show you some examples so that you know the key features. Here is an example from central Seoul, which is the capital city of South Korea in East Asia. This is the photo we've seen before. It's one of the main highways that goes through the center of the city. This is a photo taken 15 years ago. 
the government decided that they needed to improve the city and that this situation of having a main highway through the city was not good for people's lives or for the economy. So they changed it to this. This is the Central Seoul Eco Highway. It's a completely pedestrian area where people walk amongst this natural stream and there are trees everywhere, improving air quality and improving people's mental health. It has significantly reduced congestion and consequently it's improved the environment because there are fewer cars releasing harmful gases, not only to climate ch causing climate change, but also improving people's health. So urban regeneration improves the environment in a city, the quality of the air, and also the global environment by preventing climate change. It also improves transport. It's easier and quicker to get around by walking along this alleyway than by taking cars in heavily congested roads. This project also encouraged public transport since there are fewer ways to get to work by car. Here's another example from Stokescroft in Bristol, which we've already seen before. This is the old carriage works in a place called Westmoreland House. Bristol plans to convert it into this. Why will this change be an example of urban regeneration? How will it improve the area? Well, it's going to improve employment opportunities. By creating modern offices with high-tech services and infrastructure such as internet and renewable energy on the roofs, it will attract businesses to fill the office space. By creating affordable homes where people who work in the tertiary sector can live, it will attract skilled people. And so it will improve employment in the area. Additionally, it improves housing. People cannot live in this area right now because there are lots of derelict buildings that need to be removed or improved. So through these two examples in South Korea and in the UK, you've seen the four key features of an urban regeneration project. It's all about improving the lives of people in a city through these four ways, the environment, transport, employment and housing. Let me show you the example in Bristol. We're going to focus on a part of Bristol called Temple Quarter, and it's particularly important for the reasons I'm going to show you now. It is located here. This red section encompasses most of Bristol's Temple Quarter, and it's located within pretty much dead centre of Bristol, along the River Avon here and the canal in the northern part. At the very western side of Bristol's Temple Quarter is the main Bristol train station, Temple Meads, more than 100 years old. In the central area of Bristol's Temple Quarter is a former industrial area where you have warehouses where goods were stored before they were manufactured and factories themselves, as well as the old post office sorting building which was here. The gas station which distributes natural gas around the city located here. Point is, this is an old industrial area. It is one of Bristol's biggest brownfield sites. Here, the old posting office looks like this. This is the building. It's derelict, it's abandoned, it's no longer used. The post service in the UK has become streamlined and small and we don't need this building anymore. People aren't uh, shifting letters as much and transport of letters happens in a different way now. The train station just sits just behind it and just a few miles away you have Bristol's richest neighbourhood over here. But as you can see it's an unattractive typical brownfield site, so either a construction site or it's otherwise unused. Here is an example of the dereliction of Bristol's Temple Quarter. This is a Google Street View picture of one of the main streets in the area. You've got graffiti on the old factories. You have in the distance an old coal power station. And over here, an old warehouse for storing manufactured goods. You can see the weeds and the plants growing between the concrete. And you can see the graffiti on the street lights. You can see very little in the way of good housing or office space. It is a typical derelict urban area. And it's extremely important to Bristol. Not only in the past, but also it's extremely important that it is improved. Let me show you why. 
there are many parts and cities that are brownfield sites. There are many brownfield sites across Bristol, but none of them are as important or is in need of regeneration as Temple Quarter. Let me show you why. Here's its location again, just for reference. The derelict factories in Temple Quarter have led to significant rates of unemployment in the area, similar to how the population of Philwood has high rates of unemployment and low incomes because they worked in the secondary sector, in places like the tobacco factory, which are now no longer in use. So, because of the high unemployment, people have lower incomes. They also lack the skills to be able to work in other sectors. Not only that, look at Bristol's Temple Quarters, a satellite picture. You see very few green spaces. It is a concrete and tarmac laden area. It's completely unattractive for young, skilled people to come and live. Not only because there are few homes, but because it's not aesthetically, which means attractively pleasing. Because there are few skilled people who want to live or work here, there are few businesses who invest here. Lack of government and private investment in the area as a result of unemployment and as a result of it being an unattractive area. If you go back to a lesson in the UK economy topic in Changing Economic World, you'll have learned about business and science parks and how they locate on the outskirts of cities where there are green spaces. This attracts people to work. The lack of jobs, as you've seen in the example of Philwood in the inequality lesson previously, means that people lack an income to improve their homes. It means there's high crime. Additionally, the lack of investment in transport is especially important. This is Bristol's main train station, Temple Meads. It is the main gateway into Bristol from London and other major cities, and it's out of date. It's too small, it's overcrowded, the machinery is old and doesn't work fast enough or effectively enough for the number of people, especially young, skilled commuters who want to work and live in Bristol. And... As a result, potential investors in Bristol are discouraged because they think that the transport infrastructure is not good enough to be able to provide enough highly skilled people to work in those jobs. So for these reasons, Bristol's Temple Quarter area needed regeneration. It was in an inadequate state economically because of high unemployment rates. And it fundamentally lacked investment, leading to poor infrastructure, further discouraging the arrival of jobs and of people. And since it is a gateway to Bristol, it's the first thing you see when you arrive on a train. It affects Bristol's image to the world and to people thinking of visiting from around the UK. Time to assess learning. Question one. Give me some ways that Bristol Temple Quarter is important to the city of Bristol. Well, you should have said that it's centrally located, which means it's a very valuable area of land that could be built on and invested in to create jobs in the tertiary sector or quaternary sector. You should have also said that since it's in the centre and located next to the Bristol's main infrastructure networks, namely the rivers and the canal and the train station, it is an important economic avenue for transport of goods and of people. Okay, finally, why is improving the environment an important aspect of an urban regeneration project? You should have said that improving green spaces and increasing the number of them and changing transport to public transport from private transport cars not only improves people's health, it also improves the attractiveness to investment and it improves people's productivity, their ability to create value, which further improves their incomes, leading them to better quality of life. But through better productivity, you get more companies setting up in a place as they want to reach those people who provide them with great profits. Time to embed learning. Answer the questions using your understanding and then mark your answers. Number one, make sure you have both these key points. 
two. Remember, whenever you're describing the location of something in geography, you always need to say where something is and what it's near. It's near Temple Mead Station. It's, no, it's uh, south is the River Avon. Main Canal. Central Bristol. So these are the key kinds of things that you need to have in there. Three, two benefits of urban regeneration for the residents. Any two of these points. Four. You need all of these points and explain them clearly as I have, using the keywords that I do. Correct any parts that you got wrong. Add any parts that you missed and then give yourselves a mark out of the total. From the lesson, write two questions from memory and then answer them. Test yourselves on those questions in a week to check that you've really learned these ideas. In the next lesson, I'm going to be showing you exactly what Temple Quarter Regeneration involved and will continue to involve and how it is expected to improve the area. Join me then.